There are four commonly used access modifiers which determine from where classes, methods, properties, and fields can be accessed. These are private, protected, internal, and public. In this lesson, I'll explain when to use these. So these are the four access modifiers that you'll run into most often, from the most restrictive to the least restrictive. Private means that it's accessible only inside the class. That means like a method or a field. Protected means that it can be passed down to the subclasses. So for instance, if you have a book, and inside that book is a title field, and it's protected, and another class, catalog, inherits book, then catalog has access to that protected field in book. You can think of it as, for instance, a field is private in the book, therefore it's only known inside the book, and it's protected as it travels down to the subclasses, might be a way to remember it. Internal means that it is available only inside the assembly, and an assembly is like a DLL or an EXE. You can think of it as an application, so anywhere inside the application that you're programming in. It's not used that often, especially if you're just beginning in programming. But public is used very often, and that means it's accessible anywhere. So let's see some of these in action. If you're making a class, you basically have two choices, and that's just internal or public, because private and protected don't have any meaning for a class. So let's make a public class book. And now we'll make a property title. And when I do PROP tab tab, you see that it automatically makes it public, which makes most sense because usually you want to make a book like this and then access its property like this. And not only can we set it, but we can get it in the sense of saying book title equals book title, and that's also okay. Note here that you can set the get, for instance, to private, which makes this not valid. So this means you can set the title from outside the object. You can only get the title from inside the object. And the same is true with set. You can make that private, and then this doesn't work. So now you can get the title from outside the object, but you can't set the title from outside the object. Very nice syntax there in C-sharp with these properties. Now, normally properties are going to be public, but there are reasons to make a private property. For instance, if you have a property password, and normally you would make that, a, let's say, a private field, so you would have private string password. And this password actually called a lookup method, lookup password, which accessed the database and did a lot of expensive things in terms of resources. Now, when you instantiate this class, this is always going to be run. So it's, you know, whether you need the password or not later. And in order to make it so that it only will look up the password if you use the password, you can make the password a private property. And it would look something like this. So you would just make this the field and then say private. Or you, we could even go like this route here. Password like this. This becomes private. We can get rid of the set. And then I did control KD there. And then get, okay, now we can put in some logic to get the value for password and say, for instance, if password is null, then password equals, and then do the long lookup password method, which takes all the resources. And in any case, return the password. So now when you instantiate the class book, 
password is just null. And then later within the class itself, when you access password, it'll get the password, look and see it's null. And then only at that time, go construct the password or find the password or whatever it does in this method. That pattern is called lazy loading because it doesn't load everything at the beginning. It lazily waits around and then only when it needs it, it'll go get it. So that's a way to use private properties to save resources. So we've covered classes, properties. How about fields? Let's say we have a class book. We don't have a property. We just have a private field title. And this title is being defined in the constructor. So we're passing it here and then defining it, the internal title here, based on the title that's passed. And now here I'm doing control L, control L. And now I make a public class catalog, which is a type of book. And it has a constructor. And this constructor also takes a title and calls the base constructor. So when we construct a catalog, it goes here in the catalog constructor, then calls the base constructor, defines title, which is here, and then we can use title inside of catalog. So title, uh, where is it? We don't have access to it because it's private. And that's why you would want to make this protected so that subclasses have access to it. Yeah, that and then you could say uh, something that would make sense here is you could say catalog plus title. So the title would be passed in, let's say C sharp cookbook would be passed in here, it would be passed up to here, passed here, assigned here. Then we would go into this constructor and the title, which would be C Sharp Cookbook, would have catalog prepended on it. Let's see that in action. So here we have to send a title of a book. We'll do jQuery Cookbook here. We can delete this, Control L. And let me do run to cursor here. So I'll do F11 to go in, uh -huh, we're actually wanting to do a catalog here. For the example, catalog, so that we can go into the subclass. So now, right click, run to cursor, and F11. Now, we're in the catalog constructor. Title is jQuery cookbook. F11, where is it gonna go? Up to the base constructor in book, and F11, F11. So the internal title is now jQuery cookbook, F11, F11, F11. And now after here, title is catalog jQuery cookbook. So that's an example how you can use the protected modifier for fields so that they are available in subclasses. So let's stop that. So you might say, why do we have to make this protected or private? Why don't we just make it public, this field? And you could, it would actually technically work. But the problem with making a field public is that you expose it to the outside directly as it is. And if you wanna change it later, if you wanna change the name or if you want to, or if something else changes in your class and you have to compute it a little bit or add some logic to it or construct it, you really can't do that because you're passing it right out of the object as it is. And any changes you make to it are going to change the contracts that you have with other objects. So it's very good programming practice to never use public fields, but to use private fields or protected fields. Keep them inside the class. And then if you want to expose them, then go ahead and create a property to expose that value so that later you can change the value that you actually send out of the property. So you can think of properties as protective shields for internal fields. So the only other item that we have to cover is methods. And a method 
works as far as access modifiers are concerned, exactly like fields. They can be private, protected, internal, or public. And there are good reasons to use any of those. So for instance, we might have a public method that returns a string and is called display. And all it does is return a nice display of the title. So because it's public, and because catalog is a subclass of book, in this catalog we can say catalog display. Because any public method that is in the base class is also usable by the subclass. And if we run this, we see that we have the title there. So that's a public method. You could also have a private method. And if we make it private, it's going to break this because it is inaccessible due to its protection level. What if we made it... This means that display is only available inside book here and not inside catalog. What if we made it protected? Then it would mean that it's available inside this class, it's available inside this class, but it's still not available outside the classes. And so the only other one that we cover here is internal, and that just means basically that it's public. This will still work. But if we had another assembly, and in that assembly we access this class, which we can, because it's public, and then try to access this display method, we would not be able to access it. So in this lesson, we covered the basics of private, protected, internal, and public access modifiers for classes, properties, fields, and methods.